Okay, so with that, let's work an example, an actual example with an element. So we want to evaluate the element stiffness matrix with this element. So the element's going to have 5 minus 1, 0, 1, 4, or five. Okay, and so we're gonna we can evaluate this exactly by breaking the integral up into three pieces here that we know the bounds of, right? So we'll integrate over this region first, then this region, then this region, uh, because we can write down the, the bounds in terms of x and y, right? So we'll we'll do that first, and then we'll work it. You know, given so so we want to evaluate k e equals the integral b transpose c b d, right? and we'll just use we'll just use the the because we want to plug in some numbers to see how close we are, so we'll just use that c equals zero 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 one zero 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 one. Okay. So with that, we'll go ahead and work this example. All right, so the first thing we need to do is develop the shape functions for this element, right? So we'll have that x is equal to 1 x y x times y. Um, A is then x evaluated at x equals 0, y equals 0, x evaluated at x equal 5, y equal minus 1, x evaluated at, oh, I guess I, I should give the node numbering, but it's it's in order, right? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's the standard kind of uh, counterclockwise ordering that we've been using for minus 5. is 1, y is 4. So that's A, and our shape functions will be x dot inverse A, right? So those are our shape functions for this element. We can then build our B matrix. So B matrix is um, the derivative of each shape function with respect to x, where i goes from 1 to the length of n. the same thing except take the derivative with respect to y and then finally the same thing there so there's our B matrix uh, the C matrix like I mentioned we'll just use 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and so then our element stiffness matrix is going to be double integral you know what the integrand is going to be b transpose c 
B, right? So what's our integration bounds? Well, we're going to look over here, right? The, we're going to integrate in the y direction first. So if we're going to integrate from this line to that line, so this line is minus one fifth x, and the upper line is 4x, right? and then that's going to go in the x direction from 0 to 1. So we're going to integrate y, x. Right? So that's the first region. We're going to have to add the second region and change the integration bounds. So the lower integration bound is the same for the first region, the upper integration bound, now we're talking about this line here, and the equation of that line is one-third x plus eleven-thirds. And the integral in the x direction is one to four, and do this one more time. So we have the same lower bound. The upper bound here is minus 6x plus 29. And we're integrating from 4 to 5. Right? And we'll want that to give us some numbers, and then we'll look at it in matrix form. And it takes a minute in Mathematica because it is doing the derivatives, I mean, it's doing the integration uh, analytically before plugging in, you know, evaluating the bounds. So while that's working, we'll go ahead and start working on our shape function. So we know what they are, uh, but we can also derive them very quickly, right? So there's the there's our result. So let's work on our uh, these are isoparametric shape functions. So one x c eta x c eta, our A iso is going to be x c minus 1 eta minus 1 I think it might be easy just to copy this back and change the bounds. So we have 1 minus 1, 1, 1, and minus 1, 1, right? So then our isometric shape, isoparametric shape functions are x iso dot inverse a iso. These all should be x isos. So there they are. They should be exactly what I wrote down earlier. Okay. So now then we can define our um, x mapping, right? Is the coordinates, uh, the x coordinates, so 0, 5, 4, 1, dotted with n iso, and y is equal to zero, 
zero minus one five four dotted with n iso. Okay, so then our Jacobian matrix is dx xc d x eta zero you can just copy this one except now these are y's and uh, this is zero zero one since we're only talking about 2d All right so we'll go ahead and define J star to be the inverse of J so there there we have that now Our new B matrix is going to be J star times, well, B iso is going to be J star times table in iso. So we're basically doing the same operation up here as we did up here, it's just now we're going to use the derivatives of the isoparametric shape functions with respect to xc and eta. And then we multiply it by uh, j star to get the transformation we need. This is with respect to eta. And the last one is just in ISO. We'll simplify this guy. All right. So now our, now we're going to define the integrand, right, the integrand function, and I'm going, to, I'm going to define it as a function of x and y. You'll see why in a second. Right, so it is b iso transpose. dot c mat dot b iso times the determinant of j, right? And then we're going to, now that, that whole thing, well, let's just look at what it is, right? Th this whole thing here is a big function, and all in terms of xc, let's see if we can simplify it. So this is a big function all in terms of xc and eta, okay? So th those are the entries of the stiffness matrix in terms of xc and eta when you evaluate them properly, uh, evaluate the integrals. So you can see, first off, uh, one thing to point out is these are not polynomials, they're rational functions, right? So it's some polynomial divided by something and it can't be simplified out. So right there, that should put up a little bit of a warning sign in that our derivation for Gauss integration assumed polynomials. And so when you have these rational functions, your integration is not going to be exact, but we'll, we'll see how close it is, nevertheless. So anyway, uh, 
I'm going to define a function of x. Uh, and I mean, I'm using x and y, but it could be it could be anything. Um, maybe maybe not to to confuse you. I'll use because um, it, it's not the same x and y as a transformation. Let's let's use something else. Say n. Well, let's use l and k. Okay. So with that, then we're going to evaluate this at eta. I'm sorry, at um, xc equals l and eta equals k. All right, so that's our function, right? And with that, we can then evaluate our stiffness matrix by just evaluating that function. So uh, if we use a single point integration scheme, then it's just 4 because the weights are 2, so it's 2 times 2, which is 4. So 2 times 2 um, evaluated, f evaluated at 0, 0. Let's put it in numerical form. Okay, so there you can compare. So this is the stiffness matrix. Uh, exactly evaluated. This is evaluated single point integration. Now, another thing to remember, if you remember, this took a long time to evaluate, right? This basically was instant. So there is a big speed gain, although if you look at the entries, you can tell they're not, they're not that close. They're not exact, right? So uh, we can go to a higher order integration scheme. So now we'll use a two, by, we'll use a, a two point by two point. So the, there the weights are one. Uh, but we evaluate at positive and negative square root of 3, right? So we'll evaluate the function at square root of 1 third, square root of 1 third, and then should be minus minus minus, minus, plus, plus. So with that, now if you look, we're a little bit closer. Um, yeah, not exact, but anyway, the reason is because the Gauss integration scheme is not exact uh, for rational functions. So. You know, we gain a lot of speed, we lose some inaccuracy, but it turns out for most cases uh, this this can be accurate enough to give us pretty good solutions. Uh, so, um, you know, th this is an example of how you use Gauss integration uh, to evaluate a stiffness matrix. Of course, we could also go to higher, even higher order, and this this would approach uh, the exact answer if we if we used enough integration points.